for five minutes. Sorry, right, thank you very much. Appreciate it, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Black, earlier uh, you indicated that you know there were concerns about attacks on pipelines, and I and I share that. And I understand you also have indicated in speaking with Mr. Latta uh, that uh, you know one of the things we can do is to have voluntary compliance and so forth. But one of my concerns is, is as you heard me uh, at, on the previous panel, is we got pipelines going in the ground, you know, as we speak or in the process. They're not in the ground yet. If we, once we get them in the ground, we're not going to put new technology. You know, we're not going to say dig it up five years from now and put in the new technology. And so the concern is, why aren't the, the companies putting those pipelines in the ground now, putting in the technology. And again, there may be others, but uh, you know, I had a demonstration of, of what could be used with the fiber optics. And of course, you'd have to have some broadband in the area, so we'd have to work on that. But, but the fiber optics that will tell you if somebody is, if there's a leak that just occurs naturally, or if somebody's making an attack on a pipeline that's underground, they can see it, you know, live action and get out there and do something about it before the harm you indicated, which I agree with you. There can be harm to the community. You know, it's not just about stopping the pipeline. There can be an environmental risk. There's the risk of, of explosion or fire or whatever. So if the industry's not already doing it, it seems to me that would be smart. In fact, as a recovering attorney, let me posit that because that technology is out there, the gas companies might very well be at risk of having not used the best equipment and may have some liability damages in the future. So why aren't they doing it? And that makes me worry that voluntary doesn't work and that we may need to have, you know, regulatory that says, you know, if there's something out there that increases public safety, we ought to do it. What say you? Uh, we're excited about leak detection uh, mm -hmm. technology development. Uh, I know operators uh, are talking with vendors about technologies to see, sniff, and hear signs of small leaks, which are the hardest ones to detect. That can include acoustic smart balls, fiber optic cables. I've heard of uh, copper cables with conductors. Uh, PHMSA conducted a study on leak detection technologies as a result of a mandate from Congress. Uh, we heard what you alluded to on the first panel. Uh, sometimes the claims of performance, uh, we're not sure yet about how they will do uh, road testing. So operators are having those conversations right now and hoping to be able to have confidence in those technologies. I'm aware of several pilot programs, uh, not in a DOT pilot, but in a company sense, where they're testing some of those new technologies. Uh, we think the pilot program will help. Uh, an operator work with FEMSA and try and implement, hey, this is how we want to do for leak detection. So Are you okay on that? But here's the problem that my constituents, and there's two coming through Virginia. One comes directly through my district. Another one's a little bit further north. Okay, great. You do a pilot project. Wouldn't it make more sense to go ahead and put that in the ground now? Because once the pilot project comes back and says, yep, it works, they're not going to dig up the, the, the corridor over hundreds of miles and suddenly put down that technology that works. So aren't we, if we had something that already could do that, and you said, well, the new stuff doesn't work any better than the old stuff, I'd say, okay, let's wait and see. Or, but we don't have anything that will give us that detection. And at least with the one technology, and again, I admit there are others that, that are probably out there, it changes the temperature of the ground. They can tell immediately if, if there's a, a, a leak out there. And it would seem to me that that the companies would want to do this and put it down in advance, and then if you needed to, uh, software upgrades down the road, you might be able to do that a whole lot easier than, I mean, the, the ditches are dug right now and they're laying the pipe. Why aren't they doing it? And that's what causes calls into question for me, uh, voluntary versus us having some regulations. Now, if it's gonna take us 20 years to get the regulations, that ain't gonna work either. I'm not sure there is an answer to that, Mr. Black. Let me go to Ms. Sames for, for something different, because. I, you've referenced it, I think, but the finalizing of the rulemaking on the automatic shutoff valves uh, and remote controlled shutoff valves, which to me makes a lot of sense, and I think that's the one you're asking them to hurry up and get it done. But can you explain for the public the difference between the transmission and distribution systems and what considerations need to be made on these auto shutoffs for each of those? Sure. So automatic and remotely controlled valves, uh, we're putting them on our intrastate transmission. I can't speak to the interstates, but we're putting them on our intrastate where we have like what I will call consistent pressure. The problem with automatic shutoff valves is they sense a pressure drop, which means that if 
if you have pressure fluctuations in the line, it's going to shut off, and now you're shutting off customers, which is why they tend not to work as you get further downstream. You have too many pressure fluctuations because people are turning on their stoves, they're turning on their furnaces, they're, they're using more natural gas, which is sucking the gas from the system, which is dropping the pressure. Um, we're very supportive of them um, in many instances where you don't have those pressure fluctuations. Well, how about the, and I know you said it was, you were doing intra, but how about that 42 inch pipe coming through my district? Wouldn't that work better there? I cannot speak to that one, sir. Yes, ma'am, I appreciate it. I yield back, Mr. Chairman, thank you.